Lying hidden beneath the farmland of Kapua are remnants of what was once a significant collection of moa bones. Kapua is situated approximately 8 kilometres southwest of Waimate at the end of the Waimate Gorge. The area used to be a lake but was drained for farming. In 1894, bones were found by the landowner, Mr MacDonald, while clearing a spring hole for a water supply. Newspaper reports of the discovery caught the attention of Professor Frederick Hutton, curator at the Canterbury Museum. Hutton paid Mr MacDonald £20 for excavation rights. The excavation revealed what Hutton described as the largest and most varied collection of bones ever obtained from one place. Further digs took place in 1895 and 1896. Altogether, at least seven railway wagons of bones were carted away from the site. Estimates calculate that at least 2.5 million bones were removed. In March 1984, the Waimata Historical Society, under the supervision of the Canterbury Museum, carried out an excavation on the Kapua site. Denise Campbell, a local resident and historical society member, was involved with the dig. Before we started the dig, we walked up and down the road with the photograph of the first dig to try and get the exact place of the 1894 dig. So Mr Bruce Meyer with his digging machine came in and um, he started and there were no bones from the first few bucket loads so he moved over and um, he started bringing up more loads of this dirt and all of a sudden there were pelvis bones and things like that. So he said stop because he realised he had to be more careful and you had to be careful lifting them out because you couldn't just grab hold of them and pull because it might break. You had to do it very carefully with a trowel. And... Well, it was an unusual sort of thick blue pug, very porridgey in texture, so if you got into it, it was very difficult to get out and it, it got into every every pore of your skin and the lines across your hands, they were, it was there for days. We had to bucket out water one morning because the water had come in overnight and Mr Studham, he said, I'll get down in the hole. and and he got stuck and he could not get out. He had thigh waders on. Anyway, after several attempts, uh, Mr. Meyer, Bruce Meyer, lifted him out with his digger. And that was the only way he could have got out. And we imagine that's how the mowers were trapped in there and they couldn't get out either. Until we got fairly well down in the hole and we discovered some really long bones, um, that was when we con uh, Linda contacted the museum in Christchurch and Michael Trotter and Beverly McCulloch came down because they thought we were onto a, a full skeleton. It's mostly bits and pieces. There was one, um, one thing we found which was most unusual to find and that was a beak. And they said that was very rare to get something that fine mm -hmm. in a dig such as that. So something that looked like a lot of leaves sort of compacted together in a, in a compost heap. And uh, we didn't know what they were. They were sort of tightly packed. And, and Beverly pounced on them and said, this is stomach content. And we, <laughs> we sort of recoiled, you know. <laughs> thought, but she grabbed that and she said that could tell them of what they were eating and everything at the time. Canterbury Museum advised us to cover them immediately with wet sacks because if we'd taken them out and dried them out, they would have just disintegrated. I should explain here, Beverly McCulloch and Michael Trotter, they were um, well-known archaeologists on this type of, on these type of digs and they had they had since put out a book called No Mower. Here they are being interviewed, I think it would be for television. School groups started to come once we were finding bones and they found it quite interesting. 
the teacher said to the class, and she said, now, have you any questions? And this little boy was obviously fascinated with all these bones and seeing them going to no use, and he put his hand up and asked if they would be any use for soup. And we all had a laugh about that. Well, when they first started bringing up bones, Michael Trotter and Beverly McCulloch were there, and they said, do you realise these are older than the pyramids? And that really made me think. Well, I got to be involved because we'd found a neck vertebrae up in the limestone rocks, um, not far from where we lived. And I took it into the museum, and, it's, and then Linda contacted me, and she said, would you please come on the dig? So as I live just over the hill, it just seemed logical to go along. <laughs> I'd gone over in my old clothes, and by the end of the four days, I was running out of old clothes. <laughs> would have to be one of the most exciting things I've ever done.